Today's episode is brought to you by a delicious plate of Cordero Tacos del Pastor, which was brought to me by Central Mexican immigrants who in turn had it brought to them by Lebanese immigrants who had it brought to them by Turkish immigrants. So let's just have a round of applause for everybody involved. Today I'd like to talk about a specific subset of the Chinese blaster market. I had seen these blasters for a long time while browsing sites like AliExpress and Taobao, but I always ignored them and just kind of scrolled past because they looked like realistic firearms. And the Chinese have a fondness for firearm replicas and their toys. I personally really don't like that for a variety of reasons. So even when I saw firearms that I like in real life, uh, like this Mauser C96 replica, I just kept scrolling, even though this is actually a pretty decent one-to-one -one replica of a real Mauser C96, right down to the broom handle and everything. What caught my attention finally was not the blasters themselves, but the ammo they fired. That. Now, if you take a look at this, this looks like more or less a real firearm round, right? So I looked at that and even in the pictures, I could tell that's, there's no way that's foam. That doesn't look foam. And I could see that it wasn't a shell that was designed to eject from a light and sound blaster. Some of them have realistic looking rounds that are just meant to cycle and pop out the side, but this one was shown actually firing from the muzzle and the magazine was shown loading them. So I was curious and it was cheap, less than 10 bucks. So I thought, why not? When it finally did arrive, I found out that this is in fact quite solid. It's not foam at all. It is a plastic body with a rubber head. Uh, this is pretty solid plastic. In fact, this is rather similar to a Busby shotgun shell, a bit smaller, but just as sturdy. You can step on this and it will hurt your foot way more than it'll hurt the shell itself. The head has a little bit of give this way, but the rubber is extremely solid this way and it pretty much it's like an FVJ. This is hollow on the inside, so it's not as heavy as it looks, but still quite heavy for a blaster round. And I was curious to see what kind of propulsion system this thing had that could eject such a heavy and unwieldy projectile. So I loaded it up, it is a Springer, and yeah, that, that answers that question. It really can't, it's, it's pretty awful. Um, so with the barrel off, so no barrel drag, it was doing about 20 FPS sometimes. I don't know uh, what the actual average FPS reading was because a lot of the shots could not register on my chrono, which requires at least 21 FPS in order to clock in. So this is truly bad performance. Don't expect to take this to a Nerf war. That said, it is still quite interesting to use and the tactile feel of loading these rounds is fairly true to the real thing. And they make this really satisfying clatter as they hit objects and then bounce around on hardwood floors and so on. Now, before we continue, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call these plastic Steffens. We don't wanna use the term rubber bullet for the same reason that we don't say bullets and guns, we say darts and blasters, because even though we know what we're talking about, uh, casual observers or their parents might not. So we want to always keep those terms clarified to avoid any kind of confusion with actual firearm usage. Rubber bullets are a type of less lethal riot control ammunition, and under the wrong circumstances, they can actually kill. So those can be quite dangerous, and even when they don't kill, they can severely injure. So we don't want anybody hearing us use a term like rubber bullet, and then having someone confuse that with actual riot control weaponry. So we're going to say Plastic Stefan. I know that's not a great name. I know they're technically not Stefans, but they're shorter than darts. They're made of plastic until we come up with a better name, that's what I'm gonna call them. So as I poked around in this thing, I found out that the issue is not simply the fact that the rounds are quite heavy. It's that this is not really a Springer the way we think of a Springer. Uh, yes, it is a spring-powered mechanism, but it's essentially just a plunger rod. It doesn't have a tube to slide through and it doesn't have a plunger head. So it's not creating pressurized air. The rod is pulling back and then it is physically striking the back of this round, much like a centerfire firearm, and it's pushing the round out of the barrel. So yeah, it's not very effective at all, but it is actually very true to how a real firearm works. So kudos to them for that, but at the same time, this is why we don't build blasters this way. One of the most interesting aspects of this is how it 
is supposed to fire foam darts. And I knew that it could fire foam darts because I had seen a video in which Tiger Foam had one of these and his fired foam darts just fine. He had the black one rather than yellow. I had opted for the yellow because I didn't want it to look even more like a firearm. I wanted to be able to use it outdoors, but his black one had no problems. Fire foam darts just fine. And I thought, how in the world is that supposed to work? It's just a striker. It's not really a plunger system. There's no pressurized air and the striker is way back there. So how's it supposed to propel this? And I thought, you know what? I'll just give it a try, see what happens and nothing. So at first I thought maybe I had a lemon, but it turns out that these are two entirely different blasters. Yes, they have the same shell or well, almost the same shell. It's like 99% similar, but they are entirely different internally. This is a true plunger. And in fact, it's not only a plunger, it's a plunger that seals well enough that it can fire a dart out of the muzzle with that much dead space in there. That's pretty remarkable, especially for $9. I mean, even regular Nerf blasters and their competitors don't actually seal all the way through the barrel. So that's pretty impressive. And if you take the barrel off, this one can actually fire at fairly decent velocities. I haven't tested dart velocities on this yet, but I know for a fact that it can fire its ammunition at a healthy 35 to 45 FPS. Even with the darts, that's got some pop to it. So speaking of its ammunition, that's another thing. This one does not actually fire the same rounds as this one. The magazines look very similar. They're both proportioned to look like real C96 mags, but you can see that they're internally quite different. And if you try to take the bigger rounds that fit just fine in here, and you put them in this one, you see that they don't quite fit. The front end protrudes and they would not be able to actually go in. So what the black C96 is using is these little rounds. So you can see there's quite a size difference there. In addition to being smaller and lighter, they've also got the advantage of pressurized air. So they actually have some decent performance. Not anything fantastic, but out of this blaster, a good 35 to 45 FPS. And with such a solid round, you actually feel that pretty decently. So after a bit of back and forth with Tiger Foam, I realized that what we've got is two different types of blasters. I went ahead and ordered the Black C96, and I saw that there were quite a few others. And there seemed to be a wide variety. Not all of them fired the same type of ammo, and not all of them worked the same way. So I just went ahead and bought pretty much every single one I could find. So Tiger Foam and his videos were immensely helpful, as was Backyard Blasters, a channel for an Australian supplier of these types of blasters, among others. So I'm going to go ahead and link them both in the description so you can check them out if you're interested. For now, I would like to go over everything that I have so far, which as far as I know is the closest to a complete collection of these blasters, at least on YouTube or anywhere else that I've seen. So we already went over the yellow C96. They also come in other colors. I've seen them in blue and similar designs, but if it's one of the colorful ones, it's going to be firing those large rounds and it's going to have a direct Springer system, no plunger, and it's going to get pretty bad performance. If you want it just for fun, go for it. Um, there are others of similar design. So these are really common too. The M1911 replicas. This one is blue with a yellow body. They also come in yellow with a blue body. They both work the same way. There's also this blue variant with white grip. Now all of them are going to have mags that slide out the bottom. They load in at an angle, and in fact, they sort of uh, load into the breech the same way a real M1911 does, more or less. So once again, kudos for actual firearm accuracy. Backyard Blasters has a video in which you can see some of the internals at work and get an idea of how this thing fires. Then you got this one. So this one uses slightly different ammo. Uh, it is the same size as those other large rounds, but it doesn't have a rubber tip. It's just one solid plastic piece. And even though this ammo can load into the other blasters of this type, which I'll use the large ammo and I'll use direct springers, for whatever reason, this blaster cannot load those plastic Steffens with the rubber tips. It seems to jam when feeding. So I don't know if this is a newer or older design, but they all have the same logo on them. I'm presuming they're from the same company. For whatever reason, they just have compatibility issues. But it loads its rounds just fine, 
and this may just be by imagination, but I believe this one fires slightly harder than the others of this type. If it's feeling frisky, it might be doing like 24 FPS maybe? I don't know, it's hard to tell. But this one also has this amazingly bright flashlight. I know it's technically a targeting reticle or whatever, but I'm going to go ahead and call it a flashlight because that's what it is. It is really bright. So these four, the M1911s and this goofy looking thing up here, as well as the C96, in all of their various colorful color combinations are the large caliber blasters that fire with direct springers. Everything else I have is going to be firing with actual plungers and get much better performance than these, which all hover right around the 20 FPS mark. Next up, we've got blasters that fire a medium caliber ammunition. We've got a KG-9 machine pistol and a mag-fed shotgun. Now, when you look at this ammo, it looks very similar to the small ammo. It's very clearly smaller than the large ammunition, but it is not quite as small, if you can see them right next to each other, as the small caliber. So if you try to run this through the small caliber mags, it will actually feed, but when you fire it, it will get stuck in the barrels of the small caliber blasters, so be careful about that. Uh, you can distinguish this from the small caliber ammo by the different center fire pattern on the back. Might be a little hard to see on camera, but you'll know it when you see it in person. Uh, these medium caliber rounds also come in a suction cup variety, and it's absolutely adorable. And if anybody has a problem with that, they can fight me, because this is just the best ever suction cup dart. Just look at this thing. Look at how small. Look at how small. This is just not the greatest thing. So uh, the suction cup is a bit too small, and it's, it's a bit too heavy for it to actually stick to anything, but I don't care. Uh, it's doing its best out there, and I support it and I accept it for what it is. So anyway, uh, that's the medium cal. Now, these blasters have plungers, and they have great plungers and excellent seals. So this one in particular is just fantastic. So check the seal out. So needless to say, it can actually fire darts out of the muzzle just like the Black C96 can, the shotgun can as well. This one's operating with a little more dead space so it's not quite on the same level. But both of these are firing their Steffens at about 40-ish FPS, give or take a little bit. So the performance is obviously much higher than the direct springers, but it's not quite as high as the small caliber blasters. Like the direct springers, uh, these are available in several colors. There is a blue shotgun in addition to this one, and the KG-9 also comes in green. I believe these are both made by the same company, although I'm not able to verify that because for some reason I don't read Chinese. I really ought to. I order way too much stuff from Taobao and AliExpress for me not to have any clue what I'm looking at, so I should probably get around to that. But for the time being, yeah, they just appear to be similar and that's all I got for you. All of the large caliber blasters seem to be made from the same company because they do have the same logo on them. And these, because of the color combinations and the fact that they're the only ones that fire the medium ammo, I'm going to assume they are also from one manufacturer. So now we get to the most common ones, which are the small caliber. They're also the highest performance. So first of all, we've got the C96 that you've already seen. It's got kind of a variable performance going from 35 to 45, kind of all over the place, but it works decently well. Uh, there's also this pistol with a fake tack light that is actually a tiny little two to three round mag. I say two to three because if you actually load a third round in here and then you try to close it, it's pressing against the breech, has no room to compress, and you actually have to slide it back and then shove it in and close it. So realistically, it's a two round mag. This one likewise has performance in the 30s and 40s. Not super great, but still usable. This is possibly my favorite. Uh, when I saw this online, I could tell it definitely wasn't a real revolver, because you can see this is not really a, a real cylinder, but I was curious anyway, and I was surprised by the measurements. It looked quite big based on how they were describing it. When I got it, it confirmed this is huge. This is actually really big. Uh, this is almost the size of a rough cut, and it is so fun to just point and shoot. I really like big pistol grip blasters of any kind, and this one fits the bill perfectly. Uh, now, obviously it's not a revolver, 
it's got this tiny little, you know, once again, two to three round mag going on here, which is a little silly, uh, but it also does not have a hammer. This is a pullback. So I don't know why they even bothered to shell it as a revolver. It's got neither a cylinder nor a hammer, but I'm not going to complain. This is super fun. Um, and it gets about the same performance as these other pistols. And then we've got the bigger, higher performance stuff. This one is the best performer overall. It edges out the other two that I'm about to show you by just a few FPS, but it peaks in the 60s and it hits like a truck if you're up close because 60 FPS might not be impressive by elite standards, but these are hard rubber tipped, solid plastic rounds. At 60 FPS, they sting a little bit. Not enough to actually hurt, but enough to give you something to think about. So this is a black KG-9 pistol. It looks similar to the colorful one, but the colorful one has an external support arm. This one is fully internal, and it's got a button release on this side rather than a lever mag release. So in addition to hitting the hardest, it is very compact, very comfortable, easy to use, and easy to holster as a sidearm. This one is quite a bit bigger. This is an M16 replica. Unfortunately, this giant banana mag is all bark, no bite. It doesn't have a whole lot of storage space, but still hits at a healthy 54 to 55 FPS. It's got a rear charging handle, and this can still load darts up front, just like all the others can. In spite of it looking like it wouldn't be able to, they fit quite nicely. On the back here, you've got a stock attachment point for an M16 style stock. There are other blasters very similar to this, and in fact, they're in almost identical packaging, so I'm pretty sure they're the same shell, which is different internals, and they're designed to fire uh, gel balls, which are a different type of ammo, but they're very clearly the same blaster. So those M16s do come with an actual stock, and I'm willing to bet those stocks are cross-compatible. And then finally, we've got the big one, the Barrett 50 Cal. Now, this one, I was kind of hoping was going to actually have a sealed barrel all the way through, but uh, that was too good to be true. The barrel actually does reduce FPS somewhat. Uh, with the barrel, even with all this drag, it's still firing at about 40 or so FPS. But with the barrel off, it hits that same 55-ish FPS that you can expect out of the other high-powered blasters of this kind. It's got this bolt on the side, and it's got a little four-round mag. So, kind of tiny by actual sniper rifle standards, but then again, almost any Nerf blaster is. Still a whole lot of fun to use. So, this, as far as I know, is the largest and most definitive collection of these types of blasters, at least from an English-speaking source here in the Western Hemisphere. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. Do you have some of these? Do you have ones I haven't seen yet? I know that there are at least three or four that I don't have which I'm either in the process of ordering or in the process of hunting down. So any and all leads would be very, very helpful. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And next time you're eating tacos or shawarma or donor kebabs or heroes or pretty much anything, be sure to thank an immigrant.